Hello everyone, it's Carl here from Games Brains Are Being Alive with Neil Purdy, guitarist, vocalist for Progressive, Technical, Death Metal, Heavy Metal. Pretty much, yeah. Bit of everything. Luna's That's the whole. That's the one. Hello yeah. everyone. Neil, it's an absolute pleasure to catch up with you again. Um, how on earth are you? Very much. Yeah, pretty good. Yeah. Yep. Shut it off this week, but pretty good. Yeah. Chuffed after yesterday's single release, but looking forward to the next month or so. Yeah, that's it. It's a constant moving progression yeah, exactly. until you reach that point. Yeah, that's exactly it. And um, how's life then been for you? And I guess Luna's call as an entity. The elephant in the room. We can't start any interview nowadays off without talking about it over the last Yeah, time. that's it. Yeah, that absolute bastard COVID. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, weirdly, a little bit of a blessing in disguise in certain respects, which is, you know, not the greatest thing to say about COVID, but you know, being able to spend time with family, actually catch up, well, you know, especially due to, with, yeah, album launch at the end of August, it's actually given us a chance to really focus on the social media aspect of it, and it's maybe not our strongest point, so yeah. it's given us a, a proper run at it, so yeah, that's, you know, that's the plus points, obviously, bad points are the fact that you can't go gigging, um, three of the members we're all in wedding bands, so it's been a big hit for us in that respect. The fact that we can't, you know, we're working musicians as well. So, mm. so yeah, it's uh, been a bit difficult in that type of stuff. But yeah. have you been other? Um, have you been like able to? Have you been working during the period, basically? Yeah, we all still work full time as well. So, um, yeah, we've been working throughout actually. All yeah. Of us, so, yeah. Well, going yeah, in so or from home. Um, no, I think we've. It's this. A uh, few of us have been working from home. Um, me and Brad, the bassist, have been. We work in a hospital, so we're just in there constantly. Pretty, pretty much, it's kind of the busiest time for us at the moment. So yeah, it's been crazy. You must have some incredible stories to share on that front, working within the hospital industry. Uh, yeah. You think so? <laughs> it's, it's, it's not the most exciting thing, but it's uh, it's still crazy times at the moment, you know. Well, obviously, it's such an honourable position to be in at any stage of the day, but you know, currently during such a difficult period for so many different people uh, worldwide, it's certainly uh, commendable. Yeah, well, yeah, that's it. Just, I think, uh, obviously doing a bit and the fact that we we still need to get out there and make money as well like i say the wedding bands are <laughs> kaput at the moment so uh, yeah. it'd be doesn't nice to come on back either anytime soon does it yeah i was gonna say we've still got bookings literally like next week so it's just like you know always on the doorstep sort of thing it's like oh well, we've got a booking next week but pretty sure it's gonna be cancelled so yeah yeah you know, it um, really is for something like that. It seems to be week by week, just waiting until you're kind of that's exactly it, yeah. the go ahead. Mm -hmm. exactly. Yeah. Okay. I mean, you've already mentioned as well. It's no easy task to be building up to an album release when the only PR you can do is effectively online. That's compounded if it isn't your strongest point, as you suggested. Yeah, exactly. That's it. But we're we're actually working with um, PR Trail. This guy called Chris, who's been absolutely fantastic. Actually, he's uh, he's literally I don't know how he's done it. He's joined in like every week with our video chats, and how he's not, you know, fired us. I don't understand. So uh, yeah, he's uh, What's the had to sit from. Sorry, go on. No, it's just he's had to sit through some horrible banter. So it's uh, yeah, I feel sorry for him. What's his expectation on you guys in regards to what you should do? Is it a matter of get on your Twitter, your Facebook, your Instagram? Yeah, kind of. He's he's definitely been sort of pushing us in certain directions where we wouldn't have expected, you know, to go first of all. Um, it's just nice to know someone, obviously. So you can search online for contacts, but he's already in there with those contacts and it's like a completely different ball game to be honest. So, you know, we're just nerdy people with spreadsheets and contacts, whereas he's actually talking to these people, which is a, a big plus. Yeah. So, so do you yeah. find uh, you're enjoying it more, the, perhaps the more interactive uh, element? Yeah, I tell you, I didn't expect to enjoy being on Facebook this much because I friggin' hate Facebook. <laughs> to be honest, anything social media-wise, it's just, well, yeah. So um, I'm actually really enjoying it, weirdly, just trying to find 
new ways of actually promoting the band you kind of uh, realize yeah it's, it's, it's not as easy as it it looks but especially like you say you think during these times every man and his dog would be on online checking stuff out but it's hard so and so. you've watched a lot of bands uh, from the top up, up down. Um, oh, yeah. The game in a way that uh, is almost... That's exactly it. I mean, it's, that's kind of what we said from the start. It's, it's weirdly, it's horribly, you know, horrible to say, but it's, it's nice to know that every, everyone's in the same boat. Do you know what I mean? No one can gig at the moment, so it's not sort of a race to get to, oh, we want to do this gig first, or like, oh, they're doing that gig, how can we get on the door with them? It's like we're all, that's it, everyone's social media, everyone's online. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, it's kind of, it's a good point to up your game social media wise. Yeah, and you're right about everyone being in the same boat is that you can get artists at the top of the pile, as it were. The likes of, say, Devin Townsend happen to do GoFundMes. Yeah, exactly. Like, that's it. It's, it's crazy. Just you, there isn't Absolutely money crazy. even that high up, you know? know. Especially all, all this kicking up about things like Spotify and stuff. It's a real eye opener. It's like, you know, people have just got to figure out how new ways of getting out there. And I think it's more just a case of bands chatting to each other rather than competing, like almost working together. Yeah. So, like, like for, ex oh, for example, we put like a little playlist together just of bands we've been listening to, local bands and things. And it's just nice to know that, you know, we can share stuff with them, they can share stuff with us, especially even their single yesterday. The amount of people that's like mentioned us or said, you know, check us out. It's so nice to know that other local bands are just actually listening to us as well. So. Yeah. You've got to pay it forward, as it were. Otherwise, no one gets anywhere. We're just kind of stuck. Well, exactly. It's kind of a bit of a, like you say, it's, if, if we was on a lineup, we'd all be sharing the same, you know, gig poster, things like that. We'd all be, you know, plugging each other. So why not at the moment when we're not gigging? Did you give it any thought uh, to any doing anything particularly special during this period? I know it's like there's been a bit of pressure applied for some bands because of the scale of what you've seen where people are doing live streams and live shows. Yeah, exactly. That's it. That. Um, yeah, I, I would have loved to have done sort of, you know, like a little live show or something like that. But it's just, like I say, we, we've been working constantly throughout as well. So it's, it's, just, it's just time. I know what other people have as well. Mm. It's just... Um, I, yeah, I mean, this this album release obviously feels a hell of a lot heftier than the first one. More professional, hopefully. <laughs> like I say, working with Chris and stuff, it just I don't know. It feels like we're we're looking at it all from all angles, and we're trying to sort of yeah, just cover all bases in in that respect. Like just uh, yeah, something special. We're kind of hoping for, mm -hmm. but want to focus on the album release first maybe something post album release we, uh, we've got some stuff planned but well, yeah, yeah it depends on everything else yeah you, the album's going to come out and it's not like you're suddenly going to be able to go out and tour or do anything like that so you will no exactly that's it so we need some have, have some tricks up the sleeves things well the biggest trick of your sleeve is this album um which you know it's called void august 28th i've heard it i've sat there mouth agape <laughs> Um, Thank you very much. I've got to say, what on earth have you guys done here? I know that is so general and wide, but what the... I asked the same question, to be honest. So, yeah, I, pregnant is it's three years of my life just being like, I'm just going to create some absolute mental stuff and see what I can actually create. That's pretty much it. Three years? Roughly, yeah. I mean, songs were... It's a bit of a span. So, um, obviously, there's, there's stuff been... Well, the thing is, like two years ago, uh, yeah, two years ago, next Tuesday, will be um, when we played Bloodstuck. Mm. When we met with you guys, in fact. Mm. Um, and we played two of the songs from this album there, which is like a crazy thing. That's two years ago, and it's still not been even released yet. It's uh, pretty mental. So, yeah, there have been sort of... Obviously, not all the songs have been three years in the running. Um, there's some songs that, when we recorded drums, I wrote one of the songs like that morning, like mm. just parts of it. It's just, yeah, crazy to think. But yeah, I'm not really sure how we did it. It's just a case of listening to Frogloids of stuff, experimenting and yeah, piecing it all together. Fantastic. I mean, to me, you all walk in the line between genius and madness very effectively here. <laughs> it seems, yeah. yeah, well, it seems impossible to even manage to balance this. 
uh, to the, let alone balance it to the perfected way you have done. Um, were you aware of that, that you were like, particularly some of the longer tracks where you sort of thought, shit, are we overdoing it here? And um, yeah, <laughs> the, the, the occasional time, yeah. It's, it's more of a case of like having the vision you had of like, this is what I want the song to be and trying to sculpt that song to be that image. Um, and sometimes it's just trial and error. You know, you can sit there for literally days, weeks at, at my computer and I'm like, this just isn't working. Or it'll be five minutes when I get home from work, playing guitar, and it's like, oh, perfect. Problem solved, that fits in perfectly. Let's go record it sort of thing. So. Yeah. It's just, like I say, it, I, I do sometimes feel it's hot look. <laughs> Crazy to say. But, yeah. You do yourself an injustice to a degree, I think, there, because there's no Thank way you, but... hell this kind of record <laughs> just comes down to luck, as you say. Um, and I want to offer, can you offer some more insight into particularly how you wrote the record? Because at times you talk about conjuring up images, and I don't know if you mean this, but for me, it conjures up an image of weeks of sleepless nights. Uh, the four yeah. of you <laughs> off your heads because of sleep deprivation and too much coffee. And this is how you wrote it. <laughs> well, yeah, that's partly it, to be honest. Um, there was definitely a lot of sleep deprivation. I mean, talking from a personal point of view, I was trying to, I, I bought and renovated a house during this and had a child during this. So uh, lots and lots of sleep deprivation. <laughs> so, wow. uh, yeah, it was just a case of fitting this in between it all. And then, um, yeah, I think that kind of helps, to be honest. Like you say, a bit of madness in there, definitely. This is going to then, I guess, no matter what, for you to be quite a, an important record then, if it's coming out and been during mm. the same period as two significant life-changing events, and uh, buying a house and having a child. Yeah, well, this, this house I'm talking about is it's pretty much a crack den, so <laughs> it's not really a house. Maybe, um, yeah, a pile of rubble, but... Yeah, I mean, we've all been through massive life changes in that time, all four of us, like crazy, crazy life changes. Um, some good, some bad. And I think it, it kind of shows on the record, to be honest. Okay. It's, you know, I'm not just talking talk about me personally, but all four of us have been through major stuff in our life during this these last three years. And like I said, I think it shows on the record through, like you say, madness. There's emotional parts on the record. There's sort of anger to it. Yeah, we just kind of want it, every single emotion in there and uh, make it show. I believe it does. And I personally believe it's a piece of genius work, arguably well, one of the much. genius things I've heard this year. Um, even if I did have to scratch my head for ages to run it. <laughs> <laughs> you, though. Hopefully in a good way. Oh, absolutely. Um, yeah. it, it, uh, well, I could read the review when it comes out. <laughs> um, believe me, I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> But for you, having been sitting on this record, A, for quite a long time, but also particular tracks of a certain period of time, um, do you still feel as strongly about it as perhaps you did when you first kind of were shaping it? To be honest, weirdly, yeah. I, I, I wouldn't create an album that I didn't love. And I, I do still love this album. I Weirdly, not to, you know, suck my own dick, but I still listen to it, like, you know, as any other album I, I would do. Fantastic. And that's... Um, maybe not the best thing to say but I you know like I say I I don't dislike any part of this album whatsoever mm. which does sound really big headed and probably not the best thing to say but I would I, you know I wouldn't feel like putting it out otherwise oh I, I love I, I totally I know it's the idea is you've got to be humble and you've got to say hey you know we just I know that's it yeah but like that you adore your own work that you are proud of it that you will stand by it it's mm -hmm. 10 times more important then, you know, yeah, exactly. attitudes. Um, so is there any, right. So from, aside from the singles, I guess, was there a, still a track on the album that you kind of like, I can't, that's the one I want the fan base to hear. That's the one. Um, kind of, yeah. But it's, for all of us, it shifted, weirdly. Like, I, I still remember writing Locus, like, vocally, musically, there's certain parts of it, and I'm not kidding. This this song caused so much trouble, like with me personally. It the, the whole song must have corrupted about four or five times, re-recorded, God knows how many times. And it's just like, is it worth it? 
<laughs> <laughs> but it's just so that that was sort of originally the song where I was like, you know, it, it shows everything we are. It shows like from the emotional side to the deathy side to the you know proggy side. And then since then, it's changed like drastically. We've we've gone shifted towards like solar emulation, which is the thirty minute proggy madness, mm. just complete rush loving sort of song. Um, and now it's to be, to be honest for me, I I still love the last song, but Fly Further Cosmo. It's just I kind of was listening to Queen a hell of a lot at the time, and I was just like. I just I want to write like a Queen song, but death metal. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it doesn't sound anything like that. But that's what I love about it. It's just you know, it's a it's something of its own. I think. Well, I hope. I mean. I uh, yeah, I love that you brought up that particular track. Um, at that stage, I it was the title that sold it to me before the actual song. Because at that point, I'd been on a journey for so long, and then I just saw you fly further, Cos cosmonaut, and it was like, oh, okay, I think I know where this is going. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I think it, it it fits in with the whole imagery of the album, and it's um it's kind of that just whole loop the album creates. So um, it, it was the missing piece. That was the last song I wrote for the album, and it was uh, it just fit nicely with the rest of the songs. So. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So from a fan's perspective, this is to me is an album that will catapult you into stardom as much as humanly possible. But we both know there's a glass ceiling on everything, on all music, particularly in our style, uh, particularly in progressive metal. Um, what are you going to do, basically, to smash through it, do you think? Well, <laughs> yeah, that's a good question. Yeah. Uh, that's it. I mean, like you say, it's, it's just nowadays, everyone's pushing the game so much. It's just, it's crazy out there. But yeah. there's a part of me that hopes the music sort of speaks for itself. But there's that sort of, that's not enough at all. You've just got to literally shove it in people's faces, unfortunately. And I hate, but I personally hate doing that. And I'm just like, if people like it, listen to it. But unfortunately, that's not the case. Because like you say, with um, things like social media, you post something and well, like an eighth of people will only see it. Yeah. It's just, do you, you know what I mean? It's just screen and it's already gone. Exactly, yeah. So you've got to just, I don't know, have a massive flashing sign, just, you know, read, listen yeah. this. And then, yeah, it's just, <laughs> I, I honestly, I, that's, that's why we went with the VR guy, just so he could point us in the right direction. Because I feel, I don't know, after the first album, again, I, I still love it. It's just, it needed that massive push. Hmm. And, we worked so hard on this album and it's just i just want it to go somewhere where the first album didn't yeah you know it's I mean? interesting because so. obviously off the back of the first album and obviously your performance in uh the blood that melted the masses got you onto that festival uh new blood stage back in 2018 um by time festival season comes around next year it's 2021 a good three years so yeah you know, you are kind of hoping, at least I am thinking, well, okay, that's a good nine months potentially of growth and uh, listening ears and experience for this. Um, I'm not talking necessarily about Bloodstock specifically, I'm talking about all the UK rock and metal festivals that we kind of yeah, have. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Um, but it's really difficult because normally, you know, you do, you have this new album out and then you follow that up and you're out and about touring this. Exactly, yeah. So that's... it's having that next step ready, mm -hmm. you know, like I say, we've got a few tricks up our sleeves and we sh ideally we would want to focus on making this release the best possible release we can you know, do, but it's just that we're in times of, yeah, just yeah. gigs aren't possible, release shows aren't possible, so yeah, we'll, we'll see what comes of it really. And so. how do you... um? How do you think you're handling like that disappointment that comes with the fact that, like I said, you are going to release a new album at the end of the month, and that ultimately uh, you can't just you can't do a release show, you can't go on a, a, a ten ten date tour of the UK or so on and things like that. Um, um, yeah, I mean, obviously it's absolutely good that you can't do any of those things, but like like you say about the sleep deprivation, there's a part of me that thinks it's going to get released and might just be able to have a little kick in between. <laughs> 
So uh, that'd be nice. I don't think see it happening at all, but yeah, we'll see. I, I, I think that's uh, the best way to look at it. Simply, okay, the small positive will be you can relax. It's out. It's an out. Yeah, hat. exactly. Sort of. Yeah, I think I don't think that's ever going to happen to be honest. But it's nice to it's nice to have that little dream. Mm-hmm. And yeah. as a British grassroots band, um, how are you feeling, or are you concerned about the kind of grassroots venue issues we have in this country regarding like COVID and all that? And what do you, if anything, do you think can be done to help? Yeah, well, we're massively concerned about it, to be honest. I mean, especially, I mean, it's weirdly, um, I mean, the basis we talked about the other day about the fact that Gorilla in um, Manchester was so close to, you know, going under. Yeah, it got and saved last minute, didn't it? Exactly, saved last minute. We love that place. Um, maybe the breakfast have something to do with it downstairs, <laughs> but, but yeah, um, yeah, it's, it's like I say, it's just scary times. I can't believe it's like something out of a friggin' nightmare. Like, just, I mean, I'm not, I like Lincoln, but it's not got the most venues for a city ever. And um, obviously, we want to get out of Lincoln as well, play other places. But to see, like, such a, I mean, Lincoln's still got a really close knit music scene, regardless of having little music venues. To th- the fact that there's, there's something that's threatening that even more is, yeah, scary. Um, and the fact it's not just happening in our town, it's, you know, everywhere, like literally the entire world. So mm-hmm. it's just, you know, um, and the fact that it's, it's happened to massive festivals, I can't believe, you know, Bloodstock would have been this weekend. And it's just crazy. It's just kaput. Yeah. Like, I can't believe that it's all just stopped for an entire year. Yeah. Absolutely crazy. Yeah. And the uh, most frustrating thing, uh, uh, even more so, is that it's kind of, at this point, we don't know when that will come back. No, exactly. That's it. It's mm. just, it seems ever just constant. Yeah. Never ending. So, yeah. Um, yeah, just scary. So what would you say, um, what do you think can be done to help? Not necessarily like, oh, the government should give over money and stuff like that, but more I Yeah, guess- I know, that's, I mean, that's it. What kind of funding are the government actually going to do? Seriously. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I, I, I'm not going to lie, I don't really have much hope in the government, to be honest. I'm not very political in that sense, but I have literally no hope for them whatsoever. Fair enough. Uh, which isn't, not the music venues I'm talking about, I'm talking about the government. Yeah. Um, Music venue wise, I think it's a big part of it is down to bands and promoters, just literally non stop. You know, we want a gig, we want, it's not necessarily about making money at all. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's about getting everyone's music out there. Mm. There's only so much social media can actually do. I, I, I'd much rather listen to go listen to a band in a local venue than sit here in a in little, my little room and listen to a band. Of course, it's just you know, it's just not the same environment. I think everyone's going to be freaking depressed as hell by the end of it, if not, they're not already, to be honest. Yeah, just because we haven't been able to get out and watch live music, be a part of it, or entertain. Yeah, and particularly in uh, our style of music, more than any other, um, the idea of a socially distant, heavy, distant, yeah. heavy metal gig doesn't really work. It doesn't, but we've had a few gigs like that anyway, so. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's not the end but yeah it's just it's, it will, it'll never work the social distance gigs is, it's a nice idea the fact that something's tried to be done about it but it's uh, it would never happen I think in that respect it's just got to be people have got to be sensible and actually try and make Covid disappear before we can go out gigging again oh, unfortunately yeah. we've got to sort of suck it up and just stay indoors. Wear a mask. Exactly, yeah. That's it. Absolutely. I know that pretty friggin' horrible to wear because, yeah, I'm kind of used to it now, but just do it. Just friggin' stay indoors. Watch live bands on DVDs or YouTube if, if it must, if you're really pining for it that much. But yeah. yeah just don't be a knob and <laughs> <laughs> seize on people. 
So a bit more positive then. Up to this point, um, I guess the new album will be the new one, I think. But what do you reckon has been the most... What's been your favourite thing so far in Luna's Call? Favourite event or favourite moment? I mean, yeah, I think... Yeah, like I say about even just like the single yesterday, it's just the fact that like certain people mention it, and there's people that have mentioned to us like how much they love the album, things like that. Because obviously, you know, we've sent the album secretly to some people beforehand before release, and it's just a case of like them coming back to us and be like, "This is friggin' ace," and we weren't even expecting a response from them, let alone to listen to it. Um, that alone is. Amazing, because that's all I've it's been. That's all I really want from the album. I just want people to listen to it. Mm. Not necessarily <laughs> they don't have to like it. Just have a listen and you know actually give it a chance. And um, obviously, Bloodstock was a, a massive turning point for us to be honest. And um, we, like I said, we never actually made it through Metal to Masses. Um, we weren't the winners by any chance, but it was Rob Bannister that saw us, liked us, and gave us a slot, which was the best. To be honest, that was that was kind of even nicer for us. We was actually how we was it was me and uh, Brad, the bassist, recording. I can't remember what song we was recording. We was recording the bass for one of the songs on the album, and Rob Bannister rang us halfway through. I was like, "Oh, you got a slot of bloodstock." I said, "Friggin' yes!" So yeah, we was just like stop recording. That's it. A little have a little solo break. So yeah. Nice. So that was, I think that was definitely, you know, a moment where I was like, yeah, unbelievable. And obviously playing the, playing the festival as well, that was our sort of 10th anniversary of actually going to the festival. So um, that was a nice little rounding off. Mm. Good. So, yeah. And I mean, obviously, obviously you want to go back and play again and... Yeah. Definitely. We've seen many, many bands, many bands go from the New Blood stage, being part of the Metal to the Masses, mm -hmm. by winning, or, or as you say, in your case, getting the entry via just being damn good enough and impressing on the side. Um, so it's not an impossible dream. Yeah, well, that's it. We've, we definitely, we think about it pretty much daily, to be honest. So uh, <laughs> did you, it's um, just a... I have to ask, them, did your kind of ears perk up when you heard Extra Day next year? Massively, yeah. <laughs> I was like, hmm, how can we, uh, how can we push this one? But yeah, I mean, it would be, it would be an absolute dream to be honest. Um, especially, like I say, so many people have said such nice things about us. The amount of people who said, you know, I'd love to see you on that Thursday slot, and it's just like, yeah, we would too, but we'll see. So yeah. Well, with the new album, I definitely feel like you need more than a thirty-minute slot. That's the biggest bloody reason. Oh, more yeah, it's, than it's, I say that's half the set is just one song. So, uh, yeah, I think, I mean, if, if we were to get another space at Bloodstock again, I'd, I would love to just do something crazy. Just to, you know, not just time-wise, I'm talking like actual show-wise. I'd just like to step up. I'm not sure entirely how yet, but I'd just like to go crazy with it, to be honest. Oh, it's, it's, you, there's, it's becoming a little bit more of a thing where every so often, um, I noticed the last couple of years, that like be one particular band, maybe on the selfie stage, whatever, that brings something more, like more yeah, to exactly. 18, Control the Storm last year and so on, mm. you know? Well, exactly, like, you know, bands like Resin, when they uh, mm. brought out like a little bit of a string section, things like that. It's like, that'd be perfect. Just yeah. something a little extra, just to, to be honest, probably more for our benefit just to be able to play live and it's like, oh, fuck, this is actually happening. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Um, so yeah, obviously like a chance like that would be fantastic. And then, um, yeah, well obviously it just depends on the future of what this shit COVID thing wants to, you know, what direction that wants to take, so. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the thing at the moment, it always goes this way, which is, hey, what's your plans for the future? Well, just watch this space, space. <laughs> yeah, exactly, that's it. Yeah. yeah. Just keep an eye on all you, you, you say you're out and about on social media. New album on August 28th. Right now, there's no excuse for any fan not to be focused on Luna's call. Thank you very much. It's nice to hear. But yeah, it's uh, like I say, it's just trying to get it out there and try and get everyone listening to it. And uh, yeah. They will. See yeah, hopefully. That's it. Just uh, we'll see. Super confident, dude. I'm really <laughs> confident about it. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, yeah, I, I'm absolutely bummed for it, to be honest. I, I just can't wait for it to... Yeah, I mean, last thing, I, 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 love, I love Signs. I love the single so much. Um, but I just, it just doesn't feel right not being with the rest of the album. Mm. But I think that's me personally listening to the album for the last three years, so non-stop. So yeah, I, I get you know that. what I mean? Right. It's kind of like listening to a, you know, Twenty One Twelve, and then just stop on Twenty One Twelve. Well, going on to the next tracks, it's like it's just not right. So uh, I find yeah. that very, very few progressive uh, technical band uh, albums can be broken apart where it's like hey does this occasionally you might have the one that's a little bit more concise and a bit like okay maybe that's a lead single as it were and that yeah exactly but um they're always journeys and i always think like that's the best way to listen to them well in fact talking of which i am um, uh is it wilder run wilder run wilder run yeah uh, you guys reviewed them and i i, I uh, read your little review today actually that they posted that's a perfect example of a an album where you just can't really obviously you can plug one song off it but it just doesn't feel the same it's uh that album's from start to finish needs to be listened to start to finish i think yeah uh, it's, it's a banger <laughs> uh, absolutely absolutely um right before we go uh right i couldn't help noticing just to the top of it is that your favorite film on your on your chest hey i think it probably is to be honest um horror film wise is it horror film yeah Probably with, I do, I mean, utterly adore uh, Wicker Man, to be honest. Obviously, not remake. I was about to say, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, fuck that. Uh, no, yeah, but I, yeah, I think it's just, it's just mental. I, I love this film so much. Uh, yeah, I mean, the thing always have a, has it, will always have a special play in my place in my heart to be honest mm. but then then new films like or oh, newer films it's fairly odd now is it 2015 like the witch hereditary okay. they're just i i think it's just maybe not the scariest of things but it's just more that overall feel and the utter creepiness of it i absolutely love it and to be honest that was the witch alone was like a, a massive influence on the album which probably doesn't isn't so obvious where the album's a lot spacey themes and ideas uh, but yeah to be honest that was watched probably a little too much during the yeah. making of the album yeah cool I, I fucking love that film so much okay okay yeah the psychological horror stuff as you say how oh, yeah big time okay fascinating all right all right right neil before before we wrap up then last one um what do you think the biggest challenge right now is for luna's call I think you've sort of hit the nail on the head before. It's just, like I say, no one can do anything post-release. It's just, you've got the release. It's up to you. You can't gig with it. You can't do a release show. It's still down to you to actually get it into people's heads, in front of people's faces. And that's, I think that's personally the hardest thing. Yeah. Like I say, it's, um, it's just social media is utterly, utterly brutal. Mm. And... It's just, you've got to be constant with it, literally daily. And to be honest, I think that's probably the cause of more sleep deprivation than anything else. Uh, fucking social media. <laughs> fucking, just to figure out how the bastard works. <laughs> Jesus. Algorithms, man. Oh, Jesus Christ. Even just posting a bloody URL. <laughs> just randomly doesn't work. That's fine. <laughs> and you've got to figure out for the next five hours how to actually make it work. Fuck it, yeah. You know, I, I share your um, I share your pain in that, and I just hope you guys are able to get a nice, comfortable balance uh, where you enjoy it enough that you're going to continue to do it post album, like long term. Oh yeah, that's it. Yeah, I mean, to be honest, like I say, it's it's weirdly enjoyable to learn at the same time. Like, like I say, I, I do have a very dis like big dislike for so certain social media, but at the same time, it's nice to understand how it works at the end of the day and realize you know it's not just a simple post every two weeks you've literally got to be on it constantly yeah. um so it's kind of horrible but nice to learn at the same time yeah it's, um yeah um 
so but yeah hopefully we'll we'll be able to get somewhere after this release like i say we've got a few tricks up our sleeves afterwards a few things to release post void and uh, yeah see what comes of it well, there you go. That's it. Watch this space. Check out Luna's Call across all their social media where they'll be trying their bloody hardest to get to... Yes. <laughs> yeah. Void, August 28th. Um, don't miss this album. You must hear it. Thank you very much. Neil, thank you very much for your time, man. It's much better. No worries. Thank you very much. It's good to see you again. Thank you very much for watching. You can check us out on gbhbell.com as well as on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter and Tumblr. Go to Patreon and help us out over there. That's patreon.com forward slash GBHBL as well as Big Cartel where you can find some of our merchandise. We have a podcast running on SoundCloud and Apple Podcasts. And of course, if you like this video, do us a favour, hit the subscribe button and help the channel grow. Games, horror and heavy metal. What else is life for?